tente gua kia Melina Nia Melina Mio up in Lava Camasmo Nia Nihiao Kina Skuntanawa. My name is Melina Lava Camasmo and I'm a member of the Lubu Concre First Nation and we are here in our traditional territory. My experiences growing up were actually like this, really beautiful and pristine. We would go out into like the trap lines and I'd be with my kokum and my musum and just be out there for the summer. But as I was getting older and more aware and I started noticing more of the industry kind of coming in, the oil and gas that's been in around and then tar sands and then fracking. We have 1,400 square kilometers of tar sands and deposits in our traditional territory. There's just a changing in the landscape that is really different now. The land looks really dry um, and looks unhealthy in certain places. You can't drink the water anymore and the air quality, there's elevated rates of lung diseases. I just, just saw too much of the heavy haul equipment, all the cut lines, all the changing in the landscape. That's what got me to start doing the work that I'm doing to focus on what does transitioning look like and how do you increase energy literacy? A lot of people don't think about when they flip on their light switch where that electricity comes from. Is that coal generated? Is that natural gas? If we're not actually considering when we're filling our gas tank or when we're cooking our food or when we're taking a bath, like where does this energy actually come from? Then I think in a certain way we failed as a society and we failed our communities. We need to understand how we're a part of this puzzle you know, this energy matrix, and how do we kind of untangle ourselves and bring us to a new place where our communities don't have to be complicit in their own destruction. Especially here in Alberta, where our communities and our leadership's in a rock and a hard place. You know, there's basically like, do you want jobs? Do you want food on your table? Or are you gonna go out and protest this thing? And it's like one or the other, as if, as if there's not like a way to build our communities and build the society in a way that's much more respectful to Mother Earth, that has that reciprocal relationship that we as Indigenous peoples have always had. So how do we reformat and reformulate ways of being on the land in ways that look like eco-housing or like renewable energy? For me to do a master's and just write about it wasn't good enough. No, I need to actually like not only teach myself how to do it, but like teach other people in the community what this actually means. What does it mean to have renewable energy right in the heart of the tar sands? So I decided to fundraise for a solar project to install it and connect it to our health center. So it's a 20.8 kilowatt system. It stands really high up to be like a beacon of what is possible in our communities. We trained the young people from basically breaking ground to putting the whole project up. It's right beside the school, so everyday students see the project and are understanding that we're now producing energy from the sun. I see our people being leaders. We have hundreds of projects already across Canada in Indigenous communities. Indigenous philosophy and ways of understanding the world is through a reciprocity with Mother Earth. And I feel like renewable energy technology to a certain extent does that. We're doing it for the love of the land, for the love of having relationship with the land and how the land has nourished our nations for time immemorial. It's a type of re-empowerment and reconnection to who we are as Indigenous people. Every time I go into a community to talk to a community, they actually want to know more. They actually want to engage more. They actually want to put up a project. They do want to see solutions to the climate crisis and solutions for our communities.